Hi, I'm Alistair Chapman and I'm here at the Sony Digital Motion Picture Centre at Pinewood in the UK to take you through some of the many different ways that the Sony Burano camera can be configured for different shooting applications. This video is one of a series of videos on Burano, so please do also take a look at the other videos for further information on the camera. Burano has been designed to be a versatile camera suitable for both single operator use as well as larger crude productions. And as you'll see in this video, there are many different ways that it can be set up to suit different shooting styles. Broadly speaking, there's a couple of different ways to shoot with a digital camera like Burano. For bigger productions, it's common to have a focus puller or first assistant camera operator that will work closely with the main camera operator, taking care of focus, typically focusing the lens with a wireless focus controller, the AC will also be responsible for adjusting the camera's settings as necessary, and this allows the camera operator to concentrate on the framing and composition of the shot. This is generally the preferred way of shooting drama or scripted productions. For this style of filming, it's preferable to have the camera configured so that it can be controlled from the right side or the assistant side of the camera, while the camera operator uses a monitor or other high performance viewfinder mounted above or on the left side of the camera. For many other types of productions, such as documentaries, sports, natural history, it's common for there to be a single camera operator who will also control the focus of the lens. And for this one man band type of filming, it's preferable for all of the camera's main controls to be accessible from the left side or camera operator's side of the camera. In addition, for this type of filming, it's often beneficial for the camera operator to have a viewfinder fitted with a loop or magnifier eyepiece, as this makes it easier to judge critical focus, especially in harsh lighting. Burano has been designed so that it can be configured for either of these two shooting styles. Now I'm going to look at how you might configure the camera for a crude shoot, where the LCD screen will be facing the camera assistant. First, let's put the viewfinder arm on the assistant side of the camera. If you use the LCD screen's rear fixing point to attach it to the LCD bracket and then attach the bracket to the sliding arm like this, the LCD screen will end up here, just above the XLR connectors. In this position, it doesn't interfere with any of the connectors on the camera and it doesn't sit excessively high. When using the LCD like this, I recommend that you assign the menu option to assign all button number eight on the LCD. This makes it easy for an assistant to bring up the camera's menus without having to use the menu button on the other side of the camera. If you want the LCD screen to be easily accessed from the rear of the camera, you could consider turning the top handle around and mounting it to the camera body via the rear mounting points. Then the LCD arm can be extended towards the back of the camera and the LCD screen can be mounted like this, facing the rear. For this type of filming, it would be normal to attach the camera operator's preferred model of monitor, either to the top of the camera or on the left side of the camera. There are plenty of quarter inch attachment points on the handle and I recommend the use of an articulating mounting arm that includes anti-twist pins as this will prevent the monitor from working loose while shooting. Now let's look at how the camera might be configured for use by a solo operator. This will normally mean having the LCD screen on the left side of the camera. If you want to use the viewfinder loop which attaches to the LCD screen like this, the LCD screen should be mounted so that the panel is parallel with the camera body. I recommend attaching the viewfinder mounting bracket to the LCD's rear mounting point, as this will allow you to tilt the viewfinder and magnifier assembly up and down as required. The viewfinder arm can be rotated forwards for shoulder mount applications, upwards when the camera is being used low down, and rearwards for when the camera is on a tripod. To access the LCD screen's touch controls, release the magnifier's lower catch and tilt it open. When using the magnifier, you can use the thumbstick on the LCD panel to select and adjust the home menu options. 
I would also recommend assigning the quick menu function to one of the other assignable buttons, as then you can use quick menu to rapidly change most of your frequently changed settings. If you don't intend to use the magnifier loop at all, perhaps because you're making extensive use of the camera's touch tracking autofocus functions, or you just prefer to work without a magnifier loop, then I recommend attaching the LCD screen to the mounting bracket via the end mount so that the LCD screen can be tilted as needed. Mounted like this, the screen faces the operator, making touchscreen operation easy. The supplied LCD screen can be mounted in a variety of different ways without needing any additional third-party accessories. It can be mounted on the left or the right side of the camera as required and comes with a high quality viewfinder loop. The LCD screen is a touch screen with three buttons above the screen and three buttons below the screen. As well as the large home button, there are also four assignable buttons plus a thumbstick. In addition, there's a switch that will flip the display for when the screen is mounted upside down. When the home button is pressed, the camera's home screen is shown. The home screen provides information about the camera's current project settings, including time code, frame rate, battery or power levels, scan mode and codec, recording media capacity and clip numbers, and audio levels. From the home screen, you can either touch the screen, use the thumbstick or the six buttons above and below the screen to directly access and change the camera's frame rate, exposure index, shutter, ND filter, monitoring look, and white balance settings. A short press of the camera's menu button or a button that's been assigned with the menu option will activate the status menu. There are eight status menu pages. The first page shows you and allows you to change the camera's project settings. You can either touch on the item you wish to change or press the thumbstick and then use the thumbstick to navigate around the page, selecting the items you wish to adjust. To go to the next page, you can swipe up or down using the touch screen, or you can use the thumbstick. Page two shows you the audio levels and allows you to change the main audio settings. Page three allows you to see and also change your monitoring settings. Page four shows the setup of your assignable buttons and dials. Page five shows the battery or power status. Page six, the recording media status. Page seven is the networking status. And page eight, the file transfer status. To exit the status menu, simply press the menu button at any time. To enter the camera's full menu, press and hold the menu button. There is a further way to change the camera settings, and this is via the direct menu. Direct menu works in conjunction with the display overlays seen in the viewfinder or on the HDMI and SDI outputs. The direct menu is enabled by pressing button five on the optional hand grip or by assigning the direct menu function to one of the camera's assignable buttons. Once activated, you can use any of the camera's thumbsticks to navigate to the overlay functions that are now underlined to then change that setting. Do note that when the home screen is being displayed, the project information and many other items are no longer included in the HDMI or SDI overlays. This helps remove unwanted clutter from an external monitor when the LCD is being used as a dedicated camera control screen. Also, when the home screen is being displayed and you then activate either the quick menu or the full menu, the menu pages are not shown on the SDI or HDMI outputs. If you wish to assign different functions to the buttons on the LCD screen, press and hold the menu button to bring up the full menu. Then go to the project menu and assignable button. From here, you can select the button you wish to assign a function to, and then a wide range of assignable options. Many users might find that assigning menu to button eight on the LCD screen 
and perhaps direct menu to one of the other buttons useful. Now let's start by looking at the LCD screen's mounting system. The LCD screen has two mounting points, one on the end of the screen and one on the rear. This allows the screen to be attached to the mounting bracket in two different ways, either end-on like this or flat like this. The mounting bracket incorporates a swivel joint that allows the LCD to be tilted, but at the same time is sufficiently secure that the LCD shouldn't move in normal use. The mounting bracket is then designed to attach to the supplied viewfinder arm in a couple of different ways. You can mount it this way, or by turning it through 90 degrees, you can mount it this way. When sliding the bracket on and off the end of the arm, you need to push this little release catch. Note that the mounting system is based on the NATO standard, so the LCD bracket will also fit other third-party NATO rails. The LCD mounting arm attaches to the 15mm rod that runs through the supplied handle. There's a locking clamp that allows you to lock the arm in place on the 15mm rod that extends through the handle. In addition to the lever, there's a small set screw here that can be used to pre-tension the clamp. You may want to loosen this screw a bit to reduce this pre-tension if you frequently move the arm into different positions. As you can see, Burano can be figured in many different ways to shoot a wide variety of shooting styles. If you found this video helpful, do watch the other videos in this series for more guidance on working with the Burano camera.